hjem længs en tag mit hjerte i sin varme hånd. Sødme fuld er min smerte kvæt i savnet hånd. Og når det så bliver aften, går jeg til hjem egnen hen. Just som den gang jeg traf den, fylder glæden mit sind. Er du træt, trist og tvær, rejs mod dem, som du har kær. Der skal vor kolde hjerter varmes i hjemmeegnen skær.
But war did come. Only a few months later, on April 9th, 1940, German forces crossed the Danish border. In towns like ours, German only a generation before, the occupiers were received warmly, and other towns with hostility. Within two hours, the government capitulated. Within four, the fighting stopped. The king gave a speech, urging calm and cooperation to avoid needless bloodshed. Most of us listened. For years, life moved along normally, if a bit uncertain. And some of us delayed our lives, waiting for the war to end. Only a few upstarts, mostly communists and young students, made trouble for the Germans with limited public support. But then, in 1943, the winds of war blew in from the east and German supremacy no longer seemed assured. Then more Danes began to rise up and the occupation became more violent. The Germans disbanded the Danish military, took over our police and began shooting those who rose against them. Neither side had clean hands. The resistance executed informants, snitches and collaborators. Danes fought against Danes. Even in our little rural hamlet, the soldiers came. The Gestapo came. The war bared its bloody fangs. Abroad, German lines were collapsing, their forces folding under Allied advance. But our town was a powder keg, ready to explode. We knew the war would be over soon. We only had to keep our heads down a little longer.
When the war came to Denmark, we were not forced out of our homes, and soldiers did not point their guns at us, but scarcity made itself known. Our lives became more muted, and our indulgences became more and more modest, until a pinch of sugar became a luxury. Still, we had a livelihood, and the simple pleasures of life remained to us, perhaps painted stronger than ever before. I couldn't bring myself to care about the wider war. I only wanted to keep my head down until it was over. That was the safest path. I'm a little earlier than usual, but I'm sure the doctor won't mind. There are always patients who come knocking as soon as the cock crows. Thank you. 
For all the talk of war and all the soldiers parading through the streets, it had been a long time since we felt the bloody sting of violence in our little tingler. Most days at the clinic consisted of the odd fever, a bout of indigestion, or perhaps a sprained breast from a child playing in the snow. This was the first time I had ever treated someone for a violent ban, and a soldier at that. The soldiers in particular seemed to be feeling the strain of the war. What else could drive them to pilfer a small town clinic such as ours? I need a few things from the market. Perhaps Margaret will be there. I'm curious to know what she thinks. I wonder if anyone else was hurt in the explosion. I could go see if there's any... I need a few things.
Before the war began, even the markets in Little Tinglev were filled with gadgets from abroad, strange and wonderful fruits, and all manner of comforts which we took for granted. And then, in a flash, we entered an era of scarcity, and the luxuries vanished. Tinglev's market hung on by a thread, and the weekly shopping became an exercise in strained optimism and bursts of culinary improvisation.
If I wanted to obtain the occasional luxury, I had to make some moral compromises. It was a price I was willing to pay. The windows are shining like beacons in the darkness. Did Anders forget to put up the blackout curtains again? The windows are shining.
instant, the peaceful life that Anders and I had strived to protect was gone. The rooms in our home seemed emptier without him. The wind outside blew colder, and the creak of the floorboards became a reminder of both his absence and the threat that had swept through our sanctuary. I shivered as I sat at my desk, unable to clean up the disarray that the Gestapo had left behind. put us both at risk like that. His reckless actions shattered our lives. Criminal Inspector Stahl wants to ask me some questions, and I need to know why Anders was arrested. Thank you. 
They put on friendly faces. They smile at you when you walk down the street. They hold doors open and make space under their umbrellas. But behind it all, there's a quiet menace. All their niceties mask a sinister motive. Their eyes cannot help but scan and study you. They look for weaknesses, which can be exploited. And you shiver under the gaze of the Gestapo, no matter what promises they make. If they thought themselves the only ones capable of affecting civility and hiding behind a fake smile, then they were sorely mistaken. In his letter, Anders mentioned that he was taking care of some ducklings near the lake. I wonder what he really meant. According to Anders, this is where the sparrow and the others are hiding. I hope I can get some answers out of them. Stahl told me I might be able to see Anders if I return. I know he cannot be trusted, but what choice? In his letter, Anders mentioned that he was in his letter.
So terrified, crammed together in that little hut. The child had the eyes of a mouse, and her mother the eyes of a feral cat. It was only when Jacob arrived, and her shoulders relaxed, that I saw how tired Esther truly was. How long had they wandered from one hiding place to another? Always moments from discovery. How alone must they have felt, unsure if every off at hand held a hidden blade? Jacob is so often timid and afraid. He must have cared a great deal to help these two. Stahl told me I might be able to see Anders if I return. According to Anders, this... 